This brief tutorial will show you how to manage your local delegation. I've created a sample scenario um, of a, uh, an annual meeting event called Annual Meeting Sample. And I've created a sample local, which I've called Sample Teacher Local. And the president of this local is Tom Jones. So I'm going to show you how, as Tom Jones, to log in and go to the Manage Local Delegation page and how to add members to the local delegation and how to approve the delegation. So the first thing is, as president, log in to EMS. And you will see that there is a uh, My Edfo button at the top. So first thing we need to do is you need to navigate to the registration that was submitted to attend the annual meeting. And the Manage Local Delegation function is available from that registration. To access that registration, I go to My Edfo. I click on that. And then on my events, I should be able to locate the registration that I submitted. Now, in order to successfully submit a local delegation or approve the de local delegation, all of the registrations that are included in the local delegation need to have been approved by the EDFO administration team at the head office. And that's this status here. So the status of the, all of the registrations of the members that are attending the delegation need to be approved. So I expand this registration and as long as I am the president of this local I will get this Manage Local Delegation button and this will then display the Manage Local Delegation page. And you can see here there's a number of areas of the screen the top section shows the event name. So in this case, it's the annual meeting sample that I've created. There's a sample teacher local that I created. And this local has a maximum of three delegates. Now, you will see here local delegation status. So typically, when you begin to create your local delegation, you'll see it in creating status. Once it's been submitted, there's a submitted status. Once you approve the delegation, so you as the president are able to approve the delegation, it will go to an approved status. And if for some reason something changes with any of the registrations of the members that you have already included in your local delegation, the status can go to revisit. So as an example, if a member of the delegation withdraws, then that person um, is no longer attending as part of your delegation, you now have an extra spot. And so the status will go to revisit and you'll have an opportunity to add another member to get your maximum delegates. So that's the status. The next thing is this section here shows the delegation list. So these are the members that have been added to the delegation and currently there are none. So this is what you will see the first time you come to this page. Below that are all of the members that have registered for this event and you will see that there is a member name, there's an attending as flag, so members can uh, attend in many capacities. So there are voting and non-voting roles, all of which are configured um, and set by the per uh, so they're configured by the EDFO head office when they set up the event. And then the uh, members as they submit their registrations will check their attending as roles. And for non-voting roles, you can have many non-voting roles, but you can only have one voting role. So there could be many items on this list, but typically just one. Um, be beside this uh, attending as area, there is uh, an edit button, and that allows you to actually edit 
the attending as set up for that particular registration. So here you can see that this person submitted the registration as an observer. And in this simple in this sample, there's only a few voting rules and a few non-voting rules. In the actual annual meeting event, there could be many, many more. So this button will be important when you begin to adjust uh, any of the attending as roles if needed. The next column shows the registration status and this status um, will show uh, whether the registrations are approved, submitted, or they, they could be in initial status if someone has begun to create a registration but they haven't submitted it yet. So again, in order for a member to be part of the delegation, they must have an approved registration and they must have a voting role. So these voting roles, you'll see they're also separated or differentiated by color. These yellow color or it's almost an orange color indicates a non-voting role. The green indicates voting roles. So Tom Jones, this is my registration here as president. My registration is approved. The next thing you see on each record is a green check mark to indicate whether or not this record is okay as being not in the delegation. So this indicates these records are okay, not in the delegation. These ones are not okay because you cannot have non, uh, you cannot have voting roles attached to registrations that are not included in the delegation list. So at the end of this process, all registrations that are part of the delegation list will have registrations with voting roles and all others will have non-voting roles. So these three break that rule. These three, uh, either I need to change the rule by removing this voting role and I could make this person a, an observer if I wanted to do that and I could apply that change and you can see the check mark goes okay or um, I want to keep this person as a delegate um, in order for this record to be valid I'm going to need to move it into the delegation list so I'm going to do that now so I have these three um, two observers and one alternate so the alternate is a non-voting role these members will stay outside of my delegation list. This one I'm going to add in. So what I do is I highlight the members that I want to add to the delegation list. And then I click these up and down arrows to move them between the two sections. Um, so I, I, I can do that. You see I can add this member to the section. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out before I continue is that there is an actual drop down here that allows you to filter by... Um, to see all registrations or if I just want to look at the voting rules to, to simplify this to actually look at who is going to be um, a candidate for the delegation list I can actually filter this on the voting rule and that will cut out all of the non-voting rules so I'm going to do that now and continue so that strips away all of the non-voting registrations and so again I'll highlight a record and we'll add them in at any point I can save my work and uh, this um, registration it will I can continue and come back to it the status still remains creating and then I'm going to add myself in this is mine and I now uh, have created my um, local delegation with three members um, let me show you what happens if I try to add somebody beyond my limit. So let's say Jim Smith. I decide that Jim Smith, I want that uh, person to, I want him to attend as part of my delegation. So I can make him a delegate and I can add him in. And you'll see that I've reached the maximum number of delegates permitted, which is three in this case. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to remove him, give him a non-voting role, make him an observer, and you can see that this is okay. When uh, uh, any of these uh, icons uh, appear where there is a violation, so for instance, let's say I take this one and I make this person a non-voting 
sorry, that's me. I'm the president. I'm going to stay. But let's say I make Tim Jones give him a non-voting role. You'll see here that there's an error. User, users must have a voting role. User must have a voting role. So to be allowed to be part of the delegation, this person must have a voting role. And that's how uh, we, we know. So I'm going to go back and edit this, um, add this person back as a delegate. And I'm going to approve this delegation. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to approve this delegation. You're about to approve your local delegation. Do you want to continue? I do want to continue. And this now successfully has submitted this delegation. You'll see that this has been marked as approved. In the event that something happens, for instance, Jane, if Jane Jones decides to withdraw for some reason, her registration status will go to withdrawn. And I'll have an indicator here indicating that I need to, well, I'll have an indication here and I will get an email that I need to revisit this local delegation and I need to remove her um, from my delegation. I think that sums it up. If you have any further questions, please contact EDFO support and they'll be happy to assist.